For the past five months, I have been very busy working on a robotic arm. Has not been going so well. <laughs> But I'm not a quitter. I'm just going to redesign everything all over. And thankfully, I know exactly where I'm going to start with this terribly, terribly designed motor that I made. We're going to design two different gearboxes, one planetary, one cycloidal. We're not using stepper motors anymore. We're upgrading to this $300 brushless motor. And you're probably thinking, Nas, why are you not using stepper motors no more? Why are you switching and going full brushless? Only reason, because it looks cooler. Nah, but in all seriousness, for multiple reasons. Brushless motors usually provide more torque for the same weight. Also, if you run a brushless motor in a closed system, it knows exactly where it's at, even if it ends up slipping, ends up being under too much torque, it could find this position where stepper motors, if it slips by five steps, you're off by five steps and you keep on doing that over time, it builds up. So now that we know what motor we're using, let's start designing our first gearbox, which is gonna be our planetary gearbox. I am the laziest engineer possible, so when it comes to not doing math, I'm a pro. So we're gonna use this fancy calculator called a planetary generator. All you have to do is type in your desired gear ratio, press find, and boom, it tells you everything that you need. Number of teeth in the sun, planet, ring, module distance, everything that you need. Now, you're probably wondering, Nas, what is a planet gear? What is a sun gear? What is a ring gear? I got you. Let's first start with the sun gear. The sun gear is your input. The input attached to your motor. When the motor spins, it causes the planet gear to spin. When the planet gear starts to spin, it causes the planet carrier, which is holding the planet gears, to rotate inside of the ring gear. And then when that happens, you have your gear ratio where the sun gear is rotating 10 times faster than your planet carrier. Boom, you have a 10 to one gear ratio. So now after we put everything together, this is the design that I came up with. So what's really cool about this is everything's enclosed. The brushless motor is enclosed with the entire gearbox. But in doing that, you have to make sure you leave a decent amount of ventilation to cool down the brushless motor. They tend to get very hot and the cooler you could keep them, the more torque you, you could get out of them. So a very important part of the design is that you want to have bearings everywhere. You want as many bearings as possible. The last thing you want is plastic rubbing on plastic because the plastic is gonna get hot, because a lot of friction and you're gonna have plastic melting on plastic. Trust me, it happened to me, use bearings. So first, each of the planet gears will have a bearing in it. And also in the output, we have a bearing. So in total, we have four bearings in this gearbox, which honestly isn't that much. The total cost of these bearings, four is probably maybe like $10. So just like that, the first gearbox is done. Now we're gonna switch gears and start working on the cycloidal gearbox. So the main difference between the planetary gearbox and the cycloidal one is that in the planetary gearbox, we use gears, whereas in the cycloidal gearbox, we use these cycloidal discs. So the way these cycloidal discs works is for every one rotation that your motor makes on the input, one tooth of the disc rotates past one of our outer pins. So find out a gear ratio in a cycloidal disc is super easy because the gear ratio is just the number of teeth that your disc have. So this one has 10 because you want a 10 to one gear ratio. And something important to note when making a cycloidal disc is that you need to be using two of these discs that are 180 degrees out of phase from each other because the second one balances out the first one just as much as the first one balances out the second one. And if you don't have two discs that are 180 degrees out of phase from each other or you just decide to use one disc, you're gonna have a lot of vibration. Okay, so since this was my first time making this like little disc, we ran into a million problems and I probably redesigned this about four or five times. But I'm gonna spare you guys that and just show you the final version, the final working version. So this is what the final design looks like. An important thing to note, in our planetary gearbox, there was about four to five main components and we only used about four bearings, five bearings the most. In this cycloidal gearbox, we have about 20 different components, including spacers and everything that you could think of. And we also use 36 bearings. I try to cut down on the bearings in my first design, but it just wasn't happening. So I said, okay, you know what? Let me stick to what I said earlier and just use as many bearings as possible. Don't try to shortcut it. And 36 bearings. So yeah, if you're making this cycloidal drive, make sure you have an abundance of bearings to use. 
So that all tightened up, I think we are ready to test the planetary gearbox, Burgess Cycloidal gearbox. And before we start, make sure to comment which one you guys think is gonna perform better and also include why you think that. So to start off, both motors are back drivable. This is more important if you plan on making projects like a robotic dog and so on and so forth. When I had the original planetary gearbox that I designed, it had a lot of backlash. So this one, I designed it as tight as possible to have minimal backlash. So I was really curious how this gearbox would do against the Cyclotor gearbox, which is supposed to have zero backlash. And as you can see, the planetary gearbox was performing a trillion times better than I expected. And it almost hit the exact same point every single time. I tried this a total of five times, and this was the average displacement between each. So now in testing the Cyclotor gearbox, I tested it the same exact way just for it to be constant. And it wasn't as accurate as I expected it to be, to be honest. It wasn't bad by any means, but it seemed to not perform as well as the planetary gearbox. So the next test that I wanted to do was testing the max torque, and I didn't expect it to be this hard. Okay, so when we tested the accuracy, we tested it at five inches. I tried to test the torque at five inches. One, the force is just way too high. And then two, this ruler wasn't thick enough. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna make a longer ruler, test it at 10 inches, and then we can just extrapolate to see how much torque we're getting, well, how many pounds of torque we're getting per inch. And then hopefully that works. So make this thicker and also make it longer. Okay, so as you can see, that did not work out. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna print this with 100% infill and then also increase the wall count. We printed it with two walls, so we're gonna try six. And if that doesn't work, we are screwed. So hopefully it works. Way too much current. Oh my gosh! All right, make sure you have wires freaking thick enough to pull 20 amps, Jesus. And so we don't have the problem again, we just hooked up the battery directly to the motor controller. So finally, we was able to get a good reading and the max torque that we got was 17.3 pounds at 12 inches. And that gives a total torque of 207 pounds, which is honestly okay. pretty insane. We can see that it failed at the sun gear, which makes sense. Now, the Cyclotor gearbox, I tested this maybe about four or five times just because I was expecting higher torque ratings. And the highest rating we got was 7.6 pounds. And that gives us a total torque rating of 91 pounds. So pretty disappointed with that, mainly just because the Cyclotor gearbox would be more efficient than the Pantera gearbox. But this honestly just shows when you're 3D printing things, the theory just doesn't always hold up. Okay, so that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'll make sure to have all the CAD designs in the description below. And also, if you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe.